What's up guys? Welcome back to another week of Mission Kids Church at Home. I am super excited for today, so let's jump in. That's a Snapchat. Boomerang with the praise and the right back. Man, we hide in the sky, no turn back. If it be a last night, leave it all here. No fear, be clear, this is your year. Let go of anything that isn't God's steer. By Zine with the dream, man, it's so clear. Yeah, so clear. And you know, wherever you go, I'ma stick close. They gon' think we a duo. Bond so tight, hug it out like a sumo. And I never think twice, you the boss of my life. No, you go. And this world not down with us. They can try to limit faith, but it's down to us. Man, love so deep, not a game to us. When the blessing comes down, man, the praise go up. Oh 
Of our series called Unusual. Unusual is something uncommon or unlikely or unique. And this month, we are talking all about the uncommon, unlikely, unique story of King David. God chose him to be king, even though he was the most unlikely candidate. Have you ever been so happy about something that you didn't even know what to do with yourself? Like so happy, super happy, really happy, the most happy you've ever felt in your whole entire life that it just came bursting out of you? How did you respond to all that happiness? What do you think is the difference between happiness and joy? Take just a second to answer these questions with the people around you. Happiness is based on a circumstance, maybe an event or an object or a person. Joy isn't connected to just one thing or one person. Joy is an attitude that we can have in our hearts no matter what our circumstances are around us. Check this out. Hey there, Chicken Nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm Andy. Welcome to Grow TV. So, Carl. Yes, Andy? What are you doing? Nothing. I'm doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, I can see that. What's what's with the box? Box? Oh, no, what box? No, this box. <laughs> it's not, it's just a normal box, Andy. So can I hold it? No! <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to be really careful because this box is different than any other box. It's unusual to find some so rare. All right, no problem. So what's so unusual about it? Well, I care about this box. 
and I found something that I never thought I would. Well, you're not talking about the crazy egg, are you? <laughs> yeah, I got the crazy egg. Everybody knows that a box of eggs comes with 12 eggs in it, but every once in a while, you'll find one that has an extra egg. A 13th egg. A crazy egg. Crazy egg. Wow, Carl, that's amazing. You must be so happy. <laughs> yeah, so happy. I'm so happy. Carl, you seem kind of stressed. What? Me stressed? No, why would you say that? Well, you're doing your stressed out voice where your voice gets all high and loud. What are you talking about? I have a stressed out voice. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm a little stressed, but I've always wanted a crazy egg and now I have it, but... But what? Now I'm afraid of losing it or something bad happening to it. Oh, I guess that makes sense. So what do you say we jump into today's story? I suppose. What are we talking about? Well, believe it or not, we're talking about King David again, but this time it involves a special type of box. A box like this? Not exactly. This particular box was made of wood and it was beautifully designed. They actually called it the Ark of the Covenant and it was created to hold really important things in the Old Testament. What kind of things? Things that would remind the people of what God had done, like the tablets that the Ten Commandments were written on, or a jar of manna. Is that the special food that God rained down from the sky for the Israelites to eat? From when they were walking the wilderness and stuff? That's the one. And also the rod that Moses' brother Aaron used that budded leaves, even though it was a dead piece of wood. Wow, that stuff really is important. So what does that have to do with King David? Well, having the Ark of the Covenant in your town was something everyone wanted, especially David. Why did everyone want it? Well, what made the Ark of the Covenant really special is that it was a symbol of God's presence. Wait, God was in the box? Sort of, it was a place where people could come and meet with God. That's why having it with you was such a big deal. I can imagine. Well, who had the Ark? Well, David and his men came and got the Ark from a place called Bela and they brought it back to Israel. <laughs> nice. I bet they were nervous like me, huh? Holding on to the Ark, protecting it, trying to make sure nothing bad happened to it? Not really. I mean, the Ark of the Covenant is so important. You gotta take care of it. Yes, it is serious, but bringing home the Ark of the Covenant was a very happy thing for David and the people of Israel. Really? Of course, this box had so much history and meant so much to the people of Israel. I mean, it was one way of really knowing that God was with them. Wow, that was really cool. You bet it is. David was so happy that he began to dance and everyone started playing instruments. Wait a minute. David was dancing, right? Yeah. But it said he was dancing in his underwear. What, you've never done that? I'm in front of a bunch of people like that, Andy. <laughs> Fair enough. But at that moment, David didn't care what he was wearing or who was watching. He was just so happy and filled with joy. Joy? Of course, David finally brought back the Ark of the Covenant to God's people. That meant so much to David and he could not contain it. I know how that goes. Sometimes I feel like I'm just gonna burst and I'm gonna get all my feelings out. But I don't think everyone gets me. You know what, David experienced that too. Some people thought that the highest ruler in all of the land should not be behaving in such an unusual way. But David let them know that his joy came from the Lord and he couldn't hide it. Well, good for David. Why should he? Well, after listening to this story, I think it's obvious that God gives unexplainable joy. Carl, you know what gives me joy? Silly cat videos on YouTube? No, you said our big idea. Today's big idea is God gives unexplainable joy. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, two three. three. God, God gives unexplainable, unexplainable joy. joy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I'm glad we got to talk, Andy. I'm now truly starting to enjoy this crazy egg. I'm glad too, Carl. You deserve it. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. I'm really... Oh. Carl, I'm so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, Carl, don't, don't cry. God, God gives unexplainable. Okay, that's. Ah. Oh. That's that's all for today. That's all for today, kids. Sorry. Oh. Uh, not dad. Oh, Carl, look, it's an omelet with legs. <laughs> Oh, neat. Hey, Carl. See you next week. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV. David was filled with joy when the Ark of the Covenant finally arrived. In fact, even though he faced many challenges, David was so excited when the Ark of the Covenant finally arrived, he was so full of joy that he danced around in his underwear. It sounds pretty embarrassing, but apparently it didn't really bother David. When David's wife saw him dancing through the window though, she kinda got mad at him. 
She didn't like that a king would humiliate himself like that. But David didn't care. He was so full of joy that he wanted to celebrate with the entire city. Knowing that God was near filled David with an unexplainable joy. Just like we see with David, God gives us unexplainable joy too. Let's check out our Bible verse for this month. Our verse is Isaiah 55, 8, and here's what it says. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. Don't forget to take out your elementary verse card for the month of July and stick it somewhere where you can see it and be reminded of God's truth every single day. Thanks for hanging out. Be sure to scroll down so that you can check out this week's activities and discussion questions. Have a great week and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.